is Chessa Woodchecker with my special guest, Maria DeGroot from Creative Grids. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our bi-weekly. This is uh, what we do every other week. It's our first time having a special guest, so that is exciting. Very exciting. Um, quilt shops from all over the world depend on Checker for the newest fabrics and notions. And as most of you know, we are the exclusive distributor of the Creative Grids, Rulers, and Templates. So remember, you can find us here every other Wednesday. If you're watching now, I'm pretty sure you already follow us on Facebook, but if not, be sure to hit that like button. You can even turn on notifications to receive a reminder when we are live. It's always fun to see where people are watching from, so why don't we have them leave a comment with their name and where they're watching from. Sounds great. Obviously today is an extra special episode because Maria is the Creative Grids Coordinator. Today she's going to talk to you about the newest rulers and templates and tools from Creative Grids, show you what they can do, and I think you're going to answer questions too. I will. So if you have any questions, make sure to put those in the comments and we'll make sure to get them to her. Before I hand this off to Maria, as usual, to make ordering easy for you, there is a link in the description of this video. Um, one of the cool features about our website is that when you go to an item, if you scroll down on the page a little bit, there is a section called Companion Patterns. It's on the Creative Grids website, it's on the Checker website, and it's going to tell you all the patterns that go with that ruler, what it's called, who the vendor is, the designer. So that's a really cool feature to be able to find some more patterns if you can't. If you don't think you can find any, I guarantee there are some there. <laughs> um, also, don't forget that this video stays on Facebook. So if you can't watch it right now or you just want to watch it again later because it's that good, <laughs> you can because it's just going to hang out here. So without further ado, Maria, they're all yours. Well, hello everyone from Creative Grids. Like Chessa said, my name is Maria, and I would love to talk to you today about why I love the rulers so much and our newest to the family. Why Creative Grids, you might ask? Well, we have hundreds of them, about 146 if I counted right. Many different shapes and sizes for any of the projects you might be working on. Our squares range from two and a half inches up to 20 and a half. The rectangles, our smallest is a one by six, and they go all the way up to a 12 and a half by 24 and a half. Triangles, we have 25 different sizes and shapes. They have a 10 degree up to 120 degree marking lines on them. There are wedges, Dresdens, squared triangles, and more. Fussy cutting, I've got a set that you can use when you want to fussy cut a square and for trimming. I have trim tools that are probably my personal favorite and they make blocks like the log cabin, pineapples, hexagons, square and square blocks, and more. I've got a set of tools that aid you in machine quilting. I have some left-handed rulers now. You name it, I've probably got a ruler that will work for your project. Creative Grids Unique Grip is one of the reasons I love them, and I want to show you our biggest rectangle to get started. This is a 12 and a half by 24 and a half inch rectangle, and we fondly call him the Big Easy. You'll notice that the features we love the most about the rulers are right here on this one. Switch direction here so you can see. So I've got one inch grid lines all over the ruler. In between that one inch are half inch, quarter inch, and eighth inch tick marks. Our trademark non-slip embedded grip is on the back. And you'll see that on two sides, I've got quarter of an inch. With my nails. Oh yes, she likes to scratch it to show you. It's really a surface it's back there. It's just a nice sound. <laughs> the sound of no slip. It is the sound of no slip. So two sides have a quarter inch wide, two sides have half of an inch wide, and that's that grip that keeps the ruler from slipping on the fabric. Do I need to pause? You can try just speaking up a little bit. Okay. Evidently you're having trouble hearing me, which isn't normal at my house. Is that better? If it okay. guys let us know if that still isn't loud enough. 
Um, maybe start back over with the grit just to make sure, sure they hear it. Sure. We want to talk about the features that are so great with these rulers. I'll flip it back over again. Here is our exclusive grip. And then like Chessa came in before and scratched it a little to show you it is a surface back there, not just smooth. Two sides have a quarter of an inch, two sides have half of an inch, and there's glue dots in between all those one inch grid marks on most of the ruler. When I'm looking at the ruler from the front side, you'll notice that there are two sets of numbers. One set is a white circle with black, the other set is a black circle with white. You'll notice that the white ones are right side up to me right now, and the black are upside down. The reason for that is part of our famous turnaround feature. If you can imagine, I'm going to cut a straight line here on the edge of my fabric. Now if I want a 2 or a 3 inch or up to a 12 and a half inch, I'm just going to slide the ruler over to that clean line and make another cut here. If I need a half inch mark, I can turn the ruler around. So now the black numbers are right side up and easily cut these half inch increments from one inch again all the way to 12 and a half inch, the width of the ruler. The QR codes that you'll find on the ruler, which are these little squares like this, direct you to the website and to any videos or instructions that we posted on there about them. So if you have an iPhone, you can scan that QR code. It'll bring up a link that you tap on your phone and it'll take you right to all that information for that particular ruler or template. My favorite part of the rulers overall is that they are made right here in the US. And they are, this particular one is also perfect for home deck projects, trimming quilt edges, cutting border strips up to 12 and a half inches wide, and for marking crosshatch quilting, which I want to show you. Well, I want to add something first. I left it in my office, but a great tool to use with this is that Gypsy Quilter Gripper oh, yes. to help you move this around. Since it is such a large ruler, mm -hmm. it just kind of helps. It's like an extra hand do, to help. Do that things. again, just slide it like you just did. Yeah, you see when you aren't putting any pressure on it, that grip doesn't activate, which is great. You can easily slide it around, put a little pressure on it. My table might shake because it's not the sturdiest, <laughs> but, but the ruler's, the not, ruler's not going anywhere. <laughs> right, right. So sometimes I like to quilt a small project on my home sewing machine. And I want to show you a little piece I did here. This ruler has got, like I mentioned before, all the different degree angles. This one has 30 degree, 45, it has the 60, it has 120, which intersects right about here. Those 45s and 60s come from both angles, depending on which way you're working. I decided I wanted to do some diamond stitching on this particular piece. So I'm going to take the ruler with the 30 degree line, line it up on the edge of my fabric, and draw a line for my first line of quilting. I'm going to take the ruler then and shift it. For this one I did an inch. You can do whatever dimension in between that you like. And I'm going to keep moving it over and marking those lines until they're all covered from edge to edge. To do the next set of 30 degree lines, I'm going to turn the ruler onto one of those lines I already marked. I'm going to come down here so you can see. And I'm going to mark the next set of lines for the diamonds. Again, mark in one inch increments across the quilt. And then I'm ready to go and quilt it all with the ease of this big easy ruler, our largest rectangle in the family. Do you have any questions yet? Not just yet. A lot of excitement. People are excited to have a recap on everything Great. and just they're excited like we're excited. Awesome. That's what we want, right? Okay. <clears throat> so for the newest one in our family, I'm going to show you the scallop template. With this tool, designed by Krista Moser, you can easily add a wow factor to the edge of your project. It's designed as an adjustable scallop. It's perfect for borders measuring from 2 to 12 inches in width. With Krista's easy to follow technique using paper templates, you can easily space out or overlap as needed to fit any border 
regardless of its length. You have an option for the smaller border, which is this side. It's two to five inches to use this one. A medium border, which would fit a four to eight inch border. And a large scallop, which is this side, for borders up to 12 inches. You're going to design and mark the border before using, before quilting, so that the scallop element can be showcased and your quilter can load it easily to their frame. Once quilted, simply use the appropriate scallop side to trim your quilt following the marked lines that you put on earlier. And for more information, be sure to visit Checker or Creative Grids YouTube channel for an in-depth tutorial by Krista Moser. Ready for another? Let's switch to the left-handed. All right. Thank you. So here, they look just like our original six and a half square. Yep, pop down. Okay, so now you can see them good on the table, right? So these rulers look just like our six and a half inch squares and our six and a half by 24 inch rectangle. The only difference being we flipped the numbers. So instead of reading from the right side of the ruler, these are gonna read from the left. They've got the same great features as the originals, the easy to read grid lines, the signature grip, the turnaround feature, but numbering them from the left side instead of the right makes it much easier for those of you that are left-handed when you're cutting. The left-hand print on the ruler, which you'll see is right here, helps to identify that ruler once you get it home. And if you look at the packaging, You'll see this band of teal across the top there that helps show that that's a left-handed ruler as well on the shelf. And for a quick little comparison, I'm gonna show you here as uh, the right-handed version or the regular version. And you can see the left hand is a simple mirror image with the addition of that hand, I can still square up my squares, for instance. I can stick that ruler on there, trim up and across, turn it around, trim again, so I end up with this nice clean square at the end, just like I would do with my regular six, six and a half inch square. But the numbers are the right way around for those that are left-handed. And we've got such great feedback on these that we're hoping to add more, but we'd love to know what size you're hoping to see next. This is like having a band on. Yeah, everybody's really excited. We might have to start bringing you on the show in a regular oh, yeah. capacity. Wow. You know where I work, so you can give me a call. <laughs> She's just down the hall, don't worry. I can get in touch with her. All right. I'm turned around the right way here so you can see. Okay, another great one that we've added to the family is the extra large folded corner clipper. And I'm gonna show you what the original looked like. This one will fit right on a five inch square and smaller so that you can trim them, you can trim your binding pieces, some sashing if you like to do miter trims, add corners to the rectangles and squares and etc. But with the addition of this larger one, now you can use it on a much wider piece. Say you like to miter your seams and the borders for 10 inch wide borders. That's kind of a lot to wrestle on the table. So with this, I can do it very easily before I stitch it together, no marking needed, etc. I'm gonna show you how easy it fits on a 10 inch square. Look at that. Right on there. Normally I'd have to draw a line and stitch on the other side. This way I'm gonna slice it across there. This particular method was used in this great pattern by Susan Anderson, Susan Nelson, not Anderson, I apologize, from Cutloose Press called Reflections Runner and Placemats. 
Starts with simple half square triangles. You get a table runner and placemats out of it. Another great one is to add the triangles to the corner of any block, like a snowball block, or for this instance, I started with a square, put triangles on the side, now I'm adding them to the corners as well. I'm gonna lay that square on there and use the ruler, lining it up with the appropriate mark for the size square, which is four and a half inches. Slice it, take that away, stitch it, and look, I just added that corner in two easy steps. Well, three, line it up, cut it, stitch it, etc. And how fun and easy is that? So this is a great one to add to your collection. You're not hitting me with questions today. I was prepared to answer all kinds of stuff. Well, we had one. Someone wanted to double check that those QR codes did work on Androids. And oh, I, I should have known the answer to that. So I ran down the hall and barefoot <laughs> to, Jim, to Jim McDonald's office, and he slid me this little note under the door so he didn't interrupt us. Um, the Got QR it. codes do work on Android phones. Great. So it's not just an iPhone thing. If you have an Android, you can watch them as well. well. There you go. It's good to know. We learned something new today. You did. I did too. I might be a little biased with my iPhone, but that's the one I know how it <laughs> operates. Okay. For this next grouping, we're going to get into some machine quilting. Um, these are all by Angela Walters, and the smaller size makes them easy to handle on the bed of your domestic machine. The new low shank versions, which is what I'm showing you today, are the little sisters to the originals. Same shape, same great features, but a little bit lower, so they fit around your domestic foot. They give you more options depending on your shank size at home, and if you're not sure what you have, be sure you contact your local dealer to find out. The quilting foot is round in shape and approximately 3 eighths of an inch tall, enabling you to easily stitch the same distance away from the quilting tools no matter what side you're working from. That signature grip keeps them from sliding away while you quilt around them, but be careful, the grip keeps it from slipping. You are in control of where that quilt goes and how fast it moves. So think of it as a fingertip control. Try not to grip the tool and the quilt so hard that the quilt can't move while you're trying to create the designs. So let me show you what a few of them do. Well, well first, all of them. We do have our first suggestion for awesome. the left-handed. Someone would like a 12 and a half inch square. Ooh, it's a good size. That's a good size. And they're right on track. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, so first in the line, I think you can see me on the table now, is called Shorty. And he was the number, he's numbered number one, so that's how I keep track of when they came out. Shorty will help you do some straight line quilting, some concentric squares, border designs, stitching in the ditch, geometric quilting, and more. He only measures four inches by four and a half, so you can see my hand can totally cover that ruler so I can easily control it on my domestic machine. And look at these great designs that they graphed out for you to show you what it can do. Along with the grip, he's got marks that go straight up and down and diagonal, so depending on which way you're coming at that seam or square, you've got some options on how that design turns out. I love this help. <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea. You just need to stand in one place. <laughs> okay, next up we've got Slim. And you can see, see them in their packaging, see the packaging blown up a little bit so you can see it better. That's the back side we blew up. Yes. If I flip it over, there's your pictures. <clears throat> so Slim is two inches by seven inches. He is also great for stitching in the ditch. Also good for echo cross hatching and for parallel lines. And you can see a lot of what she did with this is very geometric looking. I love the spiral square that's in here. I'd love to try that on some of my blank spaces in my quilts. And next up is a question. Oh, awesome. What's the question? Someone wants to know, they got spray starch on the ruler. We've all been there. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to clean your creative grid ruler? Uh, 
I would prefer water and a soft cloth. You want to be really careful with really strong cleaners because you can damage the marks on there. Um, no hard chemicals. No, nope, warm soapy water should do the trick. Wonderful. And if not, we'll have to look into that deeper to give you a better answer. All right, Archie is number three in the list. And he's kind of cute. So Archie is great for symmetrical arches, alternating arcs, pointy clamshells. You might say, what is that? Well, if you can imagine this shape without the one in the middle there, that's a clamshell type design and they just sit right next to each other on the quilt. Elongated orange peels, which would be this look. Continuous curves. And he is small enough to fit inside of some of the sashings and a very cool design for small borders. Again, he's got straight lines, he's got some angled lines so you can work your way around an object on your quilt or create your own creation. I love this. It's simply an echo of Archie across the sashing or border and then they went back and went the opposite way and formed that really cool, almost looks like a I don't know, some kind of sci-fi movie, you know, the <laughs> lights going and all of that. So small package, but a lot of potential right there in that small piece. One of my favorites is Swiggy. I don't know if it's the name or if it's the shape that makes him one of my favorites, or her, I guess, or it, however you want to describe it. Squiggy is got a large curve on the top, a smaller curve on the bottom, and one thing I don't think I pointed out before, a lot of them have what we call needle stop points. It would be areas like this where that foot is going to come and stop right there. So if I want to keep going, I can take that ruler and simply move it over. Same thing for on the bottom side of Squiggy. I can stitch along here, take a break, move the ruler, stitch some more, etc. He's great for serpentine lines in either direction, and you have two choices for the height, like I said before. The design easily fits in a two and three inch border sashing, border or sashing. You can create those overlapping serpentine lines all over ribbons and OGs. Do you know what an OG is? I had to look it up. I might not be pronouncing it just right, but an OG would look like this, this elongated S and because of the difference in size, you can make that S whatever shape or length you want to, or do like this and do a long S and do some straight lines in between to fill it in. The options are endless. You can also use this one for clamshells. If you notice the lines that go straight across here, you could stitch just that part, move it, stitch the part again, move it again and keep going. Overall, it's just a fun curvy shape. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. Like she this. is I our like <laughs> machine quilting specialist. So if you have questions about these tools, make sure you yeah. ask. She's the one to answer it. Feel free. Even if it's not during the Facebook Live, you can always get in touch with us to ask questions later. All right, next up is Taj. And it does look like the Taj Mahal. It is that great small size to easily fit on the bed of my domestic machine. Quilt along the outside to create pointed arches in your borders, overlapping arcs, rotate it side to side to create various motifs, like these, like those. Here it's pointed up and then it's turned sideways, mirrored, up again, etc. Quilt along the inside edge to create a leafy design. It is a great fill for open spaces on your quilt. You can make some flowers using these motifs. Easily fits in sashings, and there's numerous versions to try. She's only given you a few here on the page, but I know there's a lot of creative quilters out there that will come up with more. I'm gonna stop you for another question. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Lee Hill wants to know, when you use this to quilt on your home machine, do you typically start in the middle and then? Of my quilt? I am gonna go with yes. Yeah. <laughs> if that was not what you were asking, please comment again and <laughs> specify for us. Or do you, um, <clears throat> yeah, do you start in the middle and do, do each line? 
I am of the old school that I was taught to start in the middle of my quilt and I prefer to do that because then if it shifts or moves at all, it's going to shift from the center out. If you start all the way around that outside edge, now you're trapped and especially with these rulers because they're such great lines, you might end up with puckering in the middle if you save the middle for last. And honestly, the middle is the worst one to get to to begin with. So if you do that part first, then you're, you've got a little more free space Just to work on the rest after of it. I think it is, but you know, everyone's got their, their preference. Um, long arm quilting is very different because that starts on an upper edge and works its way down the quilt. Mm -hmm. I don't typically start in the middle when I do that, but for my domestic machine, definitely I start in the middle. That was a good question. Yeah, great questions. All right, <clears throat> Elvira is next. I love the shape of Elvira. You can create multiple arcs in multiple directions without having to rotate your quilt or work from the back of your quilting foot. It measures two and three quarter inches wide, seven and a half inches tall, so you get a, a great shape going up the side. They say that her specialty is two inch squares and that would be these sections here. You can easily do just some simple arc quilting along the edge of a block or your two inch squares on your quilt. For instance, it would look like this, reminds me of an orange peel. You can also do the opposite side with this one. Work this up and down the quilt edge, whatever your preference is. The dashed vertical lines make it easy to vary the depth of the curves along any predetermined line like block edges. Border seams, modern strip quilts, or just about anywhere you can imagine they would fit. And if you didn't sing Elvira in your head by the Oak Ridge Boys while we talked about this, we need to talk later. <laughs> Don't you think in songs sometimes as you work? Yeah. Sometimes the name does it, you know. Well, that's why songs can be so happy because it just makes sense. I know, that's why I love the name of Elvira so much. <clears throat> okay, next up is Chevy. And Chevy's description says, I'm a little pointy and a little curvy. This one combines two great features into one. Use the straight side for stitching in the ditch, echo quilting straight lines going around block edges without having to stop and pivot your ruler. You can turn the corner in, at any point in the quilt without rotating the ruler or the quilt on your machine. You do what people singing now, they said. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> it's easy to make chevron designs in larger areas of your quilt, especially helpful in borders. Look at this great design. There's some echoing going on. I've got three rows of it, and then I turned, she turned and went the other way, so they intersect. I think that's so cool, and I love this. And if you want to use the other side, which is a little bit curvy, use that side to add a curvy line to any blocker border. Take advantage of those needle stop points again to pause and pivot wherever you desire, or pause and turn, move the ruler over to do that next section, etc. Create offset curvy rectangles that make for great background fill or all over quilting. So there's a lot in that small package. All right, I want to mention something about the packaging, <laughs> which you might have seen because it's a giant red dot, but a <laughs> good is. way to tell the original from the low shank is a nice red dot on the packaging that says low shank. So keep your eye out for that. And then if you've already like taken it out of the packaging or whatnot, the item number or her name is Shelly, but then there is a dash LS for low shank. So just a little tidbit to keep in your mind. I get a little wrapped up in what I can do with them, not necessarily <laughs> all the details. Did so. some dance in there. <laughs> Thank you, Tessa. <clears throat> so Shelly is next. Another fun shape. She measures four and a half by five and a quarter inches. Very versatile. Creates some clamshells from either side of the tool, meaning the top or the bottom. No need to rotate the quilt since you can create the shape from any side of the quilting foot. The needle stop notches take out the guesswork of where to start and stop for those clamshells, and these are pretty dramatic. This nice little circle here, if you intersected those lines, that's right where your needle is going to end up. 
Create a classic clamshell or give it a modern update by flipping it around to create orange peels. You can see some examples on my page here. Rotate to create flowers, arcs, and leaves. The straight edges help keep it lined up inside of wider sashing and smaller borders. The outside of this measures four and a half inches, so that fits right inside of a lot of the borders now. And these little dotted lines in here are three and a half inches, so I sometimes use those to keep me right inside that sashing as well. So again, lots of options with a simple little shape. We got our last machine quilting last tool. Last but not least. Yeah, we still got more templates and rulers after this, so don't go away. <laughs> All right, last in the lineup is Sid. And Sid is super versatile. Gives some straight lines and what we would call a bracket design on the side here. This one's a little bigger. It's four and a half inches by six inches tall. It's a little bit straight and a little bit curvy. The straight side I would use for straight lines, but look at these marks. I've got two more dashed lines to the right and two more to the left with also another edge out here for doing some echo lines to radiate out from something on your quilt. It's great for turning a corner. It's great for stitching in the ditch. This center cutout is probably one of my favorite features of this ruler because I can center this right on my seam line. You see these dotted lines, this one here and this one there. That would line up on my seam line and this channel keeps the foot from varying at all as we quilt along. Once I get to the top, if I wanna do a starburst like what you see there, I'm gonna stitch out back to the middle, other way and back again. Rotate that ruler so this dotted line lines up with the seam line. Do the other two legs of that starburst. Flip it around here and do the other two again. And just like that, I've got a starburst. <clears throat> you can also use that crossbar for when you're gonna change direction. Say I'm stitching up straight and I wanna go to the right. I can go that far, turn it. Again, keep going or turn again without having to really change what, the way your quilt is laying on the table. It's also great for quilting piano key borders. Use the crossbar to stop and change direction for those too. And it's very fun. That curvy side, which we refer to as the bracket quilting design, is a little bit curvy and a little bit pointy. It's perfect for skinny borders. Repeat it as an all over design. Use it for quilting quilt blocks. It's a great edge to do some curvy echo quilting. Utilize the dashed lines to work your way out from a seam line or any straight line as you go. And that is our machine quilting tools. Our low shank. Our low shank machine quilting tools. Now I'll take this out of your way so Perfect. that you can get your cutting mat out. Obviously a Creative Grids cutting mat. A Creative Grids mat, you got it. We have what, the 24 by 36 inch here? I do. That's that great gray and teal color. Grab a sip of water while we. All right, well, I'll give some people some shout outs then before Great. we talk about Deb Heatherly's Kitty Corner Ruler. Perfect. Hello to Karen and Marie from Sew and Love Fabrics in Vermont. Thanks for tuning in <coughs> today. Hello, Linda from Denmark. Hello, Carla Jean in Quilting Crazy in Florida. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in for Maria's first episode <laughs> with us. I love the names. So I'm gonna let you interrupt you later for some more it. shout outs. But That's yeah, great. we'll let you get to get your to your specialty. Well, thank you very much. Ooh, you know what might be interesting? Tell our viewers how long you've been in this industry. Oh, well let's see. Don't worry about aging yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, my one of my boys is 25 and I learned how to quilt when he was a baby he used to come to a group with me in, in his uh, little carrier seat and um, I have sewn since I was probably eight but quilting became really great and fun at that point I think I was ready for a new challenge um, after learning there, I, we moved to Wisconsin where I got involved with Nancy's Notions. So I've been teaching and demoing and helping to create projects for a long time, uh, 25 years officially, 
Um, and now I'm new here at Creative Grids, and I think I've been in training for this for a long, oh, that feels great. <laughs> it's a little hot back here. <laughs> it's like a thousand <laughs> degrees in here. <laughs> but we do but, it for you guys. Yeah, and you know, I, I could not be happier to be here. I get to use a lot of my knowledge now for extra work with the quilting, and I still get to sew and quilt and make things, so it's great fun. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to show you next. This ruler is by Deb Heatherly. I think we skipped one, didn't we? Well, we'll do Deb first. We'll come back to seam guides. Oh, shoot, my bad. No, it's okay. Okay, this is the Kitty Cornered Ruler by Deb Heatherly. The tool measures eight inches by 10 inches and makes 11 different sizes of the Kitty Cornered block, two at a time. You're gonna use this to cut the odd angles and then trim them down to size after stitching. So take a look on the table here with me. Here is the block we're gonna create. And I think she calls it her kitty corner block, correct? Yes. So I'm gonna move this to the side and show you really briefly the steps to get there. On the tool, you'll see an angled line for cutting part for piece A. I chose to make a five inch block, so my quick reference here for a five inch block, I need two six inch squares, so I've got those here with me too. I'm gonna take them one at a time and fold them on the diagonal. I'm gonna place that under the ruler lining up the tip with the tip of my square and the dotted line right along the fold of that square. So I've got two free pieces here. And you can see the fabric can move as long as I'm not putting any pressure on the ruler. Once I put a little pressure down, that fabric's not going anywhere. I'm going to cut right alongside of that template. I'm going to save those for a minute and show you a fun fact. And here is the center of that block. So you're gonna do that twice. And the reason she does it twice is because when you go to cut the other parts, I've got two rectangles for a five inch block. Let's check here. It should be a four inch by six and a quarter inch rectangle. And she wants you to put them right sides together. Here's my next set of lines here. So you can see that cutoff point up here is gonna line up with the top of the rectangle, the solid line down along the side, and I'm gonna cut and put my slight pressure, and look, I can't really move them. I could if I really yanked on it, but I'm not gonna do that. And I'm gonna cut again, and I'm gonna make one more move. I'm gonna clip these tips off following the marks here on the ruler as well. We'll leave him sit over there because I only need to show you one. I have to be really honest. I was kind of hurrying and I went to sew one together and I put them like this. That's not correct. Can you do me a favor? Because yeah. a couple people have an issue seeing. Can we bring that teal back out just to the edge? Sure. To set the ruler on a little bit when you talk you about it. That's the beauty of live. You can get that taken care of while we're talking, huh? Can you see it on the screen? Ah, I read the comment. <laughs> no, I mean the ruler. Oh, oh yeah. See it okay. <laughs> All right, so to achieve that block, I'm going to turn this, it looks like a kite, turn it around and put the fattest part here. I almost did it wrong again. And here. I'm going to sew one first, press it away, sew the other one, press it away, and it's going to look like this. Okay? So first trim, now it doesn't look as pretty as my first one, right? So then I'm going to pick up my ruler again, and you'll see all of this mark here with the grid. It's going to keep that block from slipping underneath while you trim, but these great little marks up here in the corner is what I'm starting with. They're going to sit right there at the tip of that triangle. And I can easily see 
my five inch marks are still on top of that fabric that I sewed together. If you use too heavy of a seam allowance, that shrinks the block. So if you're putting one together and it doesn't quite fit, take a look at how wide your seam allowance is. So here's my first trim. And because I can see this quarter inch, I know when I sew it to the next thing, I'm not going to lose the point of my kite in my quilt. It's going to look gorgeous. I'm going to turn it around again, line up that five inch line with that line I just cut, that clean edge I just cut, and trim off the rest. When I first learned to quilt, it was important to have your pieces be exact and perfect and fit together perfect. Let me tell you, I love what these tools do because it allows me to sew things and experiment with my seam allowance because even, even though I've sewn for this long, my seam allowance changes sometimes when I'm tired, when I'm rushing, when the fabric isn't super great, etc. But that easily, with two squares and two rectangles, you end up with two kitty corner blocks. And this is that great tool designed by Deb Heatherly, and I'm sure that you've seen some of her stuff before. Take a look at it. If you like to make fun blocks like that, it takes all the sweat out of it. And that's that. Okay. Deb has lots and lots of patterns. She does, so. and the videos she has on our website for this are really great to check out. Yeah, make sure you check out our YouTube. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go back to scene guides here well, on my we're list. we're going to say hi to some people. Oh, well, You can hello. get set up, and I'll just talk. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Hello to Stephanie from Country View <coughs> Quilting. Thanks for tuning in today. We have Joanne from Joanne Lenar Len Lendaro Quilting. See, I told you I was jo mispronounced something. Jeannie from No Thimbles Custom Quilting in Texas. Hey, thanks for tuning in today to watch Maria on her very first Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello to Cursa <laughs> from All About Quilting in North Carolina. Hello, Kathleen from Peace to Peace Treasures in Illinois. Wow. Hello, Audrin from Quilt and Scent in Norway. Oh my gosh. Tuning in That's from all fantastic. over. Hello to Brenda from Wisconsin. Ooh, my last home state. <laughs> yes. So now I'm just going to slide out of here and let her talk about seam guides. Okay. So those of you that have been sewing for a while know that seam guides have been around. I'll be honest, I have a, a a yellow one and a blue one at home that are no longer part of my collection because they slide all over the place. Now that Creative Grid came out with these, they're fantastic. So I want to show you the difference in size. This is the 9 inch one and this is a 15 inch long piece. Both of them are half of an inch wide. That 9 inch one will span a 6.5 inch block and the 15 inch easily spans a 10 inch square. I think you can go up to 11.5 inches if I measured right before. It's great for making lines to mark for half square triangles if you prefer to do that or if your instructions tell you to do so. And I want, to, want you to take a look here. <clears throat> they come packaged with six in a package, so that's why it looks so thick there. But here they are, out of the package, one at a time. You'll notice that the entire surface is covered with that grip. Here's that scratchy sound Chessa likes to make. And here on the fabric, I can move it all around because I'm not applying pressure. Once I put a little pressure on it, and I'm like holding a piece of paper down from the wind kind of pressure, it does not move at all. <clears throat> so here, for instance, is a 10-inch square. If you're like me, you have a lot of patterns that say, draw a line corner to corner. So here is one way I can easily do that. You can start by lining up the angled corner of the tool in the corner of your square, following these notches along the middle to the opposite corner. I can either take a mechanical type pencil that's thin enough to fit in this little square and draw my lines through here, or I can simply draw a line on the outside that shows me where to stitch. Because that grip holds it still, the fabric doesn't move and squinch underneath while you're marking. So we've made a great improvement to these seam guides by covering them with our grip on the back. So again, a nine inch, 
and a 15 inch and it'll cover most block situations that you come up with in your sewing ropes. Question oh, well, first. Sure. I have a question that kind of opens up a new conversation. Great. They wanted to know what the blue mat was, but this is blue fabric. It's so I think blue fabric. We should yeah. talk about <laughs> this mat here that we have in four different sizes. And we should we should tell them the fabric is to help you see the lines while we're talking about them. Um, and you normally would have fabric under them as you're cutting on your mat, so we're just giving you a little bit better glimpse of all the details on those rulers. But this the is mats. a great grid mat. Wow, these things are fantastic. They are this gray color with teal markings on them. The same grid work that we have on all of our signature rulers. So one inch grid lines that are solid. In between are the half inch, quarter inch, and eighth inch ticks. I've got a 45 degree line and I've got a 30, 60 degree line here. Sometimes I like to lay fabric on straight and use that 45 to cut an angle. I have lots of tools to help me do that too, but sometimes I like just my rectangular ruler and maybe the other one's in a bag somewhere, I don't know. But the mat is really great for helping with those things too. And a great feature is those of you uh, fabric connoisseurs <laughs> who may have bolts in bolts is that they have these nifty little markings here. Yes. You can do your 1 8 inch yard. Maybe we go to top down, I can point them out a little easier. Got your 8 you go. inch yard here. Your quarter inch, your third. Uh, let me correct one thing. It's not an eighth of an inch. That oh, would, what? That would be this <laughs> guy. See, we need each other for this. <laughs> we balance each other. An eighth of a yard. Quarter of a yard. There. There third, you go. three eighths, half yard, so on, so forth. Do you want me to list them all? Sorry. No. Five eighths. No, <laughs> and another great little feature is these stars in squares. So you'll see these little stars down here, and the stars represent one and a half inch cuts. So you got one and a half, then you got three, so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and the squares are two and a half inch cuts. You know, very popular sizes of That's a great strip reference. Cutting. That's a great reference. And just to be lying a little bit more because I know. off topic, <laughs> I'm very good at that. The back side, you want to talk about the back side? Well, the back side has got one inch by half inch windows. It again has a 60 degree lines back here and no 45. I know a lot of people use their ruler like we show you that turnaround feature to cut your fabric so I would probably use this side more for that because I don't want to get confused by the other marks on the mat. But it's just to give you two options and they are self healing. So if you find you've got marks or little cuts or nicks or things happening on your mat. When was the last time you changed your rotary blade? <laughs> there well, is another a great thing is that this side is designed specifically for the stripology rulers. Oh, there you go. Did not forget about the stripology, but it's not You my just hadn't gotten today. there yet. Sorry, I was I, rushing you. No, nope, that's okay. <laughs> it's a great reference for, which we, sh we don't have one in here, but. Hey, Jim, bring us a stripology ruler. <laughs> because we know Jim's listening. <laughs> but for instance, you put your fabric on. See, it's handy, we've got this fabric in here. I tend to fold it while it's on the table. So I've got a little bit smaller piece to deal with. Jim brings us one, we can test if it's wide enough to use <laughs> wide open, but. We're calling you out, Jim. I know, we're calling Jim out. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got it lined on here. Oh, oh look there's what Jim. Delivery. Jim McDonald. Thank you, Jim. Everybody, thank you. <laughs> Lifesaver. <laughs> so for those who don't know what the stripology looks like, look at the great marks on here. And that's just the XL. This is the XL, and I've got options here for squaring up squares. This groove in between here, I'm going to move it here so you can see the little teardrops, are every half an inch. So if you want to be sure that you're cutting every inch. And while you're pointing down here, yeah. we have those great squares and stars again. We do. So here, if I start cutting at the 20 inch, if I go from square to square, that's going to be a two and a half inch. If I go start here with a star and go every star, 
Those are, what were they again, Chessa? The stars? You know I don't like quizzes. They're, half, they're <laughs> inch and a half cuts. <laughs> they are inch and a half cuts. And those marks line up perfectly on the grid back here with the mat. So it's a double check to be sure that you're straight on the fabric, that you're not cutting what I like to call flying geese pieces, etc. So there's a little treat for you too, is that stripology ruler works great with the back side of the mat for that reason. And the stars and squares are just a great treat, visual for when you're cutting. There's a little ad lib for us today. Jim, you can come get this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Okay. So now that we've beelined our plan for the day. That's all right. <laughs> you got a question? Oh, yeah. Great. Barbara wants to know, how do you, what do you use to clean your mats? Warm soap and water and a soft cloth. If you've got grooves and things working on the mat, I think the product is called a mat smoother. Um, we have them on our website. And it's round with a little kind of a handle, not really a handle, but a little knob on the top to hang on to. It's not like sandpaper, but as you glide it across the mat, it'll grab up all those little fibers that got caught in the grooves from your dull blade. And ladies and gentlemen, if you are doing this as you cut, you probably want a fresh blade in there because you're cutting too hard. You're actually scoring the mat. So you don't want to do that. And you also don't want to use a box cutter on these mats. That's not what they're made for. That rotary blade should glide right through the fabric and not gouge your mat underneath. They're self-healing mats, but they I mean, are. if you, you really dig into them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it happens because we hate to stop and change our blades. I am just as guilty. I always want to finish what I'm doing. I know. But then when you change it, it's like, oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> right. I don't remember it being as easy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. Is this our last one? It is. So get your questions Can't in. be over already. Well, you, you can just keep going. <laughs> I could if you want me to. I have to turn the fan back on, though. <laughs> All right, so last but not least, I'm going to show you the front of the ruler here. This is called a 10-inch Log Cabin Trim Tool Duo. It is designed by Jean Ann Wright, and she's the one that's brought us a lot of the Log Cabin and Pineapple and Hexagon Trim Tools that we have in our, in our ruler family. They are my favorite because I don't have to cut and seam so precisely. I get to trim as I go. This is another one that will do kind of the same thing. I've got to turn that the right way. All right. So if you look behind me, sorry, Cindy, before you switch ways there, this quilt behind me is done with this jaw, we'll see, 10 inch log cabin trim tool. It is a pattern from Cut Loose Press, which we partner with a lot to make things that work with our rulers and templates and it's called Star of Valor, and it's written by Penny Heron. So hi, Penny. <laughs> and we love the quilt. And if you look here, you can see there's one log cabin block. Down in the red, this is another log cabin block, the same style, same size, but now she's used different colors to get that star design that shows up in the middle with the blue borders. So just because it just makes a log cabin doesn't mean you're locked into one specific thing. Look at this gorgeous quilt that she made with it. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at the ruler here. I've got a couple things here. We made a cut loose press plus pattern called Geese in the Cabin. It uses one block, but there are six different layouts. I'm gonna flip to that page in the back here. Look at all that, all that change back From there. From one block. From one block. So it's a log cabin block that got triangles added to the corner, if you can see this. Same block, what we started with in the center, she used triangles on two, side, two of the corners. And it happened at every layer so that in the end, you've got flying geese shooting across your log cabin. It's pretty cool. So look at, look at all of this. And I'll show you these in just a second. I can do the standard log cabin blocks, which include the, the log cabin, the courthouse step, and the half log cabin block. If I wanted to do a skinny version, here's my skinny log cabin, skinny courthouse, and skinny half 
log cabin block. <laughs> and awful. for a really great treat, here is a log cabin duo. And that one incorporates two sizes of strips, which I'll get to in a minute. So to give you a visual, here is the traditional log cabin, courthouse step, the half cabin, there's the skinny. Look at the difference. Turn on the same way. This one starts with one and three quarter inch strips. You're going to stitch, press, and trim before you add the next round of strips. This one is a one and a quarter inch strip. How many rounds does the skinny one have? Oh. I'm going to make you count. Two, three, four, five. Nine including the center. And there's some options for a larger center to start, smaller center, etc. But if you're trying to use up some scraps, those skinny ones are great for that. Here is the courthouse steps to compare. Isn't that fun? And then here's the half cabin. What a great place to get rid of leftover strips from a project, or maybe you had just a little bit of something left over. Sometimes I cut up my strips as I'm working on something else with these tools in mind, and I'll cut one and three quarter, one and a half, and one and a quarter, because each of the tools uses something different. And then I have boxes marked with those for later on when I'm going to construct. So the treat block, as I like to call it, is this duo log cabin, which you can see uses the two cabin techniques. There's the larger square in the middle, and we started with the one and three quarter inch strips. The next round is one and a quarter, etc., working our way out from the middle of the block. And isn't that clever? So, like all of our products, please go to the website and look them up because there's always more information there. There's how-to videos, there's more patterns that companion with them, and you can always contact us if you've got questions about how to put things together. The possibilities are literally endless with this tool, and we hope to see you at the checker site soon. Well, we do have a couple of things people would like you to go back and review. Awesome. Someone would like to hear again about the seam guide. We can start okay. there. Great. You want to take those you can tell me what you want me to I do. Don't, I You're don't know. You're the boss today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the seam guides. And what's the question? They must have just caught the end of it. They said, oh, you mentioned something about seam oh, guides. Sure. So let's just do a little overview again. You got it. The seam guides come in 9 inch and 15 inch lengths. They are completely covered on the back by our signature grip, so wherever you're using them to mark, they are not going anywhere. I think one thing I might have forgotten to say before is that these are our marking tools, not rotary tools, so don't be tempted to get your cutter out and cut along there. Look how close your fingers would have to be to that blade. That's simply not safe for one thing, and the height of them is so narrow that you wouldn't want to cut along there. I typically use them to mark large squares like that, but you could also use it for quilting lines or anything else that you want to mark. Anything else? I think that was a good review. Again, a <laughs> reminder, there is a link in the description um, that's going to take you to these items. Um, that's also a great way to check out the videos and stuff like that. Perfect. Uh, someone wanted to know what this was called again. Oh, yeah. The it's, Deb Heatherly Ruler. Yep. It's called Kitty Corners. And it makes and it makes the kitty corner squares that look like a kite in the middle with two triangles on the outside. She's got great markings on here for cutting all of them. You've got a great reference here for unit A, which would be the kite, and for unit B, which would be the ears over here. She probably uses different wording than that. I apologize, Deb, if I got that wrong. <clears throat> but there's marks for trimming to line up to make this part, and then trimming the final square with these marks here on the ruler. Did I answer the question? Yes. Okay. But I want to make you talk about one more thing because okay. I don't remember if you said it earlier. It's with the flat corner clipper and the dog ears. Oh, yeah. I don't think I did. I think this is so <laughs> cool. And did we stash them under here? Oh, I'm sure we did. They're somewhere. So I we see the placemat, so we're close. <laughs> so we talked about the folded corner clipper a little bit earlier. You know, that was Susan Nelson. It's actually the XL. There was an original, Correct. but now the XL 
can fit across a 10 inch square. And I think, I'm gonna let Maria show you, and I'm super <laughs> excited about it. I think this is just a really cool feature. It is a cool feature, you are right. So yeah, the folded corner clipper fits across that 10 inch square. However, if you like to make half square triangles out of random pieces that are left over from something else, you might have a mix of them on the table or maybe your seam allowance wasn't quite the same. I can use this tool to trim them to size. I think this one started out as a layer cake. I'm gonna trim them all down to four and a half inches because I can easily get that on all of them that I've looked at. I didn't actually cut it, but look at how slick this is. I've lined it up four and a half inches on the bottom with my seam line going across the stitching that I have on that square. Maria, your rotary cutter blade. Oh my gosh, it's open. Yeah, don't do that. Always close your blade. I opened it and then decided to talk some more. So, <laughs> open your blade. You can simply cut across that straight edge and cut that excess off over here. Get in the habit of closing your blade every time. I'm going to flip this around and trim that corner up here. Those of you who hate dog ears, I have some friends who are like, I hate them. <laughs> this is a great tool to get rid of them. Now look at my triangle. Nothing's sticking out. And when I go to press it, all I have is a perfect half square triangle square. I th I'm think that's so fun. It is very fun. <laughs> and it's fun to do it while you're sitting here on the table and everything's laying nice and flat and all that. Okay. I think we've answered everyone's questions. Um, just a reminder that this video does stay on Facebook when we're done, so you can right. watch us whenever you want. And we monitor it so we can answer the questions mm -hmm. too. Us directly too. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so thank you guys for watching. Um, all these check, all these checkers, all these creative <laughs> grids. All these creative grids <laughs> items are a checker exclusive. Correct. Um, ask your local quilt shop to order them for you, uh, as well as visit our website. There is a creative grids website that has a where to buy feature. Yes, very handy. So thanks much for watching, and I'm gonna see you back here on Wednesday, September. 18th. <laughs> I always wanted to throw confetti. <laughs>